Hey everybody, Tommy Sierra here. I'm at the top of Raven Bald today, and um, it's my first time on this hike, and it's reminded me a little bit of the first time I had to turn around and go back early on a hike, and I didn't have to do that with this hike, thankfully it was pretty easy, um, but um, it did remind me of my first time going to the top of Mount Mitchell in North Carolina, which is um, one of the highest peaks in Eastern North America, if not the highest, in the Southeast at least. Let me set the scene for you. It was a pretty warm day. It was in the summertime. It was, um, in the, I'd say in the upper 70s, and it was pretty, uh, pretty overcast and um, stormy. So it was, it was kind of humid. And um, when I started out, it wasn't stormy. It was pretty sunny, actually. So I thought it was a good time to give it a try. I severely underestimated the amount of water I would need. For those of you who don't know, Mount Mitchell, hiking to the top of Mount Mitchell, is pretty much straight that way and um, straight up. And so it's very strenuous and you get dehydrated very, very quickly. I took 64 ounces of water. I had to share that with me and the dogs. I, I underestimated the amount of water because I assumed that there, there would be places to get water along the way. I mean, usually when you're hiking the mountains, there's little trickles and streams and stuff every now and then if you need to drink out of that. So I assumed that there would be some places, at least for the dogs to drink out of. I wouldn't have to, I didn't think I would have to share my own water with them the whole way. But because it was warm and humid and I was sweating like crazy, I, uh, I went through my water really, really quickly. And um, to make matters worse, it was, uh, we keep getting thunderstormed on. The third mistake I made was starting too late in the day. I left, um, I left a little bit after lunch and uh, it was just too late in the day to start that hike. It, it really needed to be done way earlier because you know it, it takes hours to get out there and hours to come back. You don't want to be hiking in the dark, especially on that trail. It was very uh, precarious in spots. In fact, I remember when I was on that trail for the first time, um, I actually got lost. I went down the trail and there was a little spur that, that kind of went off into one direction and it wasn't marked. So I traveled down that for about a mile or so before I realized, you know, it was it was getting narrower and narrower and it's turning into like a little bunny trail after a while. And uh, I realized, wait a second, something is wrong here. There's, this is not the right way. So I had to backtrack, and, you know, uh, a mile back in the, in the direction I came from. And uh, so that ate up even more time and uh, you know, these thunderstorms were rolling in, like really bad thunder and lightning. So I was completely soaked. I was trying to try to refill my water the best I could in the pouring rain. I had to take shelter. That was the first time I really had to swallow my pride and turn around and go back. And it was just purely for safety and common sense reasons. I mean, there comes a point where you just have to do that. You just have to throw in the towel and, and, and it, it's for, to save your life, you know? You just have to know when to say when. When do you say when? Well, for one, if you get a late start in the day or if there's some other delay that causes you to um, be on the trail for a lot longer than you anticipate and the sun is going down and you know that you need sunlight to get back, it's a good idea to call quits early. If you have a health emergency, if you have if you get injured, uh, if there's some hazardous weather that appears that you can't, you know, wait it out. Uh, those are excellent reasons to go. If you run out of water and you get severely dehydrated and there's nowhere else to get water, you need water, you just do. And you need uh, energy. When you're on these, these straight up, you know, very strenuous climbs where you're ascending, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet up a mountain, you can burn through your energy very, very quickly. And the first time I did that, I'll tell you what it's like. I mean, it's like the most severe hunger pangs you've ever had in your life. I mean, just think about being really, really, really hungry and just have that onset like crazy. All of a sudden, I, I hike 900 miles a year or so, you know, every day. And I thought, you know, Mount Mitchell, oh, I could do that, right? 
it was uh, it was a lot. It was hard. It was hard, and I and I I underestimated it. Around halfway up, I started to, to you know after I took the wrong turn, and I and I burned through all my energy. You know, luckily I had some you know granola bars and stuff to 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 refuel with. But you know, if you don't have that, or if you consume all of your your energy reserves, it's another reason to head back. You could always try to get another day, but you can't do it if you don't survive. There's there's reasons that you have to turn back. You, you got to do it. You got to you got to know when to just call quits. And I know that's not easy, especially if you if you traveled a long way to get there, and you don't have you don't know when you'll be able to try it again. But you just have to realize, hey, it's better to to go back without having completed the trail than it is to go back in a body bag. Even if you have all the technology in the world, paper map really can save your butt if you if you uh, run out of batteries or something else happens, or you just need a second opinion on where you are. Making you know markings on the paper map every so often it does help you give you an idea of where you're at. So you could track your progress the old school way if you need to. Ration is key. And as far as water and food goes, yeah, it's going to make your pack heavy. It's going to be even more work to go up those, those, those climbs. But it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And when it comes to water, water is extremely heavy. You could always dump it out if you get to the top and you you barely touch the water and you don't need it. You're not thirsty. Dump it out. Not all of it, obviously. So keep that in mind. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Check out my other videos if you're new to my channel. I'd love to have you subscribe. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Now get out there and have an adventure. But be prepared.